Hi, welcome to chapter 18, textbook, page um, 473, yeah, page book, pa uh, 473. Oh, it's called chapter 7 because uh, we have been following 1, 2, 3, right? Okay, so this chapter is on planar kinetics of a rigid body. We are look, going to look at uh, work and energy, yeah, work and energy. So, the... Uh, at the end of the lesson, students will be able to define uh, various ways of force and couple do work and apply the principle of work and energy to rigid body. So the applications is just anywhere, yeah, anything to do with work, um, with rotational, with linear, yeah. Uh, this chapter will be able to solve the question. Another good example is this soil compactor. Uh, where the engine is actually transformed into trans translational kinetic energy of the frame and translational rotational energy of the wheels and the roller yeah rotational so yeah this is also another application so let's move on to this from chapter the previous chapter i think you you still remember the lesson right from the third chapter yeah we went into uh, energy yeah where I introduced to you several uh, formula one of it was T plus U 1 to 2 equals to T2 so what was T T was linear yeah it was linear movement but now since that we have rotational we're going to add something new which is half I G moment of inertia Omega square so this is something new yeah this is following the previous chapter the linear movement which is half m v square okay so this is the difference so if it's pure translation so we have omega zero so the formula will end up being half m v square but if we have rotation if it's pure rotation then we're going to have uh, the component the half i omega square component so some cases it will be both both together yeah both translation and rotation how is it moving example like this yeah it's moving in a linear movement at the same time this axis is actually rotating yeah there will be an axis and it is rotating about the axis while moving linear so it's a bit difficult to actually draw and show yeah if it's in the class then i can just show it to you directly yeah okay so so that's done so what was new let me just look at this yeah okay now in chapter 14 yeah we looked at t right so t was only half mv square and then now i'm introducing to you half omega square so this is for the rotational component yeah okay now in chapter 14 we also looked at few things yeah we also looked at okay we looked at variable variable force so when an object having an external force on outside yeah so this is your variable force uf so we looked uh, we we had a form uh, we studied the formula f cos theta ds okay next was the weight component the weight component is mgh or mg can be written as w h is your delta y negative is because it's always pointing downward then we studied on spring us half ks square minus half ks one square okay something new that i'm going to introduce you in this lesson will be um yeah work work that is done due to uh moment moment of inertia so this is the additional thing yeah which is m theta two minus theta one yeah so this is the additional lesson and going back to the lecture note, it's actually all covering the same thing that I have actually just told. Ah, there goes rotation. Okay, and then we have principle. Remember this formula? So now this formula will be two portion. Huh? One is for uh, linear and one is for rotational. So this will be half mv square plus half ig omega square. Now, this one will be all these components. Uf, Uw, Us, Um. Oh, don't forget the friction. So, if you have friction, if the question mentions about friction, so you automatically minus. So, what is friction? Mu n distance. Yeah, mu n multiply with distance. Yeah, mu n will be force. So, force times distance. Okay. 
So coming back to here. So this is an example uh, in the lecture note, which usually my style is that I skip the examples in the lecture note. I will go in directly to um, the question to be discussed. Yeah? So we will not be discussing 18.1. 18.1 is a bit easy. We'll go into 18.2. Yeah. So let's move on to 18.2. Okay. So the 30 kilogram disc is uh, pin supported at the center so center here we have pin supported determine the angle through which it must rotate to attain an angular velocity of 2 radian per second resting from uh, starting from rest it is acted upon by a constant couple moment so couple moment is actually given yeah so we know the angle also yeah we can look for the angle okay the spring is originally unstretched and the cord is wrapped around the rim of the disc so these are the information that's given so you have a spring yeah so remember the formula t1 plus u12 equals to t2 so we need to find all the t's first or you can also do one by one yeah no problem so t1 is at rest yeah because the question is actually mentioned rest so of course t1 is zero okay that's done now t2 is there any linear movement here there's no linear movement right see you see this is only rotating on one spot it is not moving while rotating yeah so you don't have a linear movement so that's the reason why they only talk about the uh what do you call uh the rotational uh, rotational kinetic energy yeah so rotational will be i i naught omega square so omega square given in the question wait a minute that it is uh two radian per second so this is omega square yeah and then we have the half now what is this in the middle the one in the middle is the moment uh, of inertia yeah so the axis of rotation is right in the middle you remember for a uh, moment of inertia for for the uh, for the, for a disc it is half m r square so this one for half m r square, m r square you see so you get the calculation is 1.2 okay so this is done this is 1.2 keep that aside now let's look at the middle part the middle part it doesn't have an external force oh, sorry. the middle part it doesn't have an external force just one second yeah okay okay the middle part doesn't have an it doesn't have uf okay okay and it's also not moving up or down yeah it doesn't have a uw also so uw only being recorded if the disc have a uh, elevation whether it's moving up or down yeah, but it causes it to have a delta y but in this case it stay put one place so don't have so the only thing that it has is actually spring 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 component and the m theta yeah that's all the spring component and m theta so what is the m given in the question yeah theta is something that uh, we need to look for okay so what is the spring yeah, what is the spring uh, springs uh, value? Okay, so what do we have here? Half k spring constant is ten k. Okay. Half k, okay, and then we have the uh, uh, this part is the s. Okay, what is this now? Okay, s is actually r theta, the arc distance. Correct. The linear, it can be actually translated to linear movement, right? So that is why it is r theta. The radius is actually 0 0.2. Okay. So with this, you can solve the, uh, solve the, for the theta. Okay. Can I? Okay. Any problem, you just, uh, you can meet me during the consultation hours. Okay. So we go, before we go on to 18.6, let's go on to our lecture. Yeah. Uh, this chapter is going to be very unique huh? because we only have one uh, what do you call one video yeah, the others all was broken up into many videos so this one only has one video okay let's go into the the next part of the chapter which is uh, we have done 18.1 18.2 18 18.3 we have done 18.4 as well now we're going to move on to 18.5 of uh, textbook Okay, which is page 496 yeah conservation of energy yeah conservation of energy in chapter 14 remember what i told you t1 plus 
v1 equals to t2 plus v2 okay the previous formula they have actually combined right combined the v's but the next formula we are just going to divide them into two portion initial and final yeah initial and final so determine the uh, at the end of this lesson you'll be able to determine the potential energy of the conservation forces and apply the principle of conservation of energy okay so if you see here there are many applications yeah uh, there are many applications one of the ex applications is like you can just read up on this the torsion spring located at the top of the garage door winds up the door um, uh, winds up as the door is lowered yeah this this is for garage in countries which snow some most of the time you have a closed door garage so when the door is raised uh, the potential energy stored in the spring is transferred to gravity gravitational potential energy for of the door's weight making the door easily open so our parameters such as torsional spring stiffness and initial rotational energy of the spring important when you install a new spring so yeah of course it is actually important the stiffness yeah okay and then we have torsional spring also here opening and closing the hood of the truck yeah so let's move into uh, conservation so if you read here it says that uh, the conservation of energy theorem is simpler energy method okay uh, and then once again the problem parameter distance and the key indicator for the is good method to solve the problem yeah you could use, actually use that okay i'm not reading because it would be very sleepy yeah you can just read up by yourself i'm attaching this file uh, this this uh, powerpoint slides for you as well so work is dependent on the initial and final position of course yeah it's very important yeah for potential energy it depends on the initial and final where is it located and all yeah okay and then the conservation of formula this is the formula like what i've explained earlier so what we have here vg initial and the final yeah you break it up and then we have the spring which is the v also yeah half k s square you break it up into two portion okay so your v in this case is uh, v of the spring and v uh, v of the gravitational force and v of the spring yeah so this is the lesson for conservation of energy so this again the example from the slides which are very very straightforward and easy you can just go through by yourself yeah i'm gonna go into uh, example 18.6 from the textbook uh, one second yes 18.6 from the textbook not 18.7 yeah so this is the end of the chapter once i've discussed the example we are done with this chapter okay okay let's look at this a 10 kilogram uh, ab rod is confined so that it ends move it ends move horizontal and vertical slot so this is moving horizontally and this will move vertically as it moves can you see you know the spring the spring will also be uh, moving as well yeah the spring has stiffness of k 800 and is stretched when it is zero okay so initially the rod will be up here right yeah and then it moves down so when it moves down the spring is actually extended yeah okay determine the angular velocity angular velocity what is angular velocity omega Okay, when a b is zero and if the rod is released from rest rest uh, when 30 degrees okay so you need to find the omega so omega it's moving from rest 30 degrees uh, goes down to 30 degrees okay let's now draw the free body diagram from the information that we have got okay so what we have here first thing to draw is the you have a force here do not forget the weight because they have actually mentioned 10 kilogram rod if they mention you cannot uh, you cannot ignore them yeah so the datum will be the reference when theta is actually zero so that is the datum so how far it extends down is 0 0.4 sine 30 this is the vertical height the the length uh, the length of the rod is actually 0 0.4 yeah so this angle is 30 right so it means the vertical height is actually 0 0.4 sine 30 okay so you can understand that now um, okay halfway through if it's halfway through of the weight component because you see 
the weight component actually it is in the middle right i'm going to use another pen it's in the middle so when from here to here okay from here from the middle to here the height is actually half only the whole height is actually 0 0.4 but half of it yeah because the rod you see the rod huh? this is the rod right okay the weight is in the middle so now if the rod comes down here okay the weight is shifted in the middle can you understand or not so what's the difference the difference is this height that would be only half of the rods in vertical position yeah so don't get confused with that okay so that that part is done so the weight component is done so you can understand the weight component the distance is uh, the distance is 0 0.2 sine 30 so 10 kilogram multiplied gravity times with 0 0.2 sine 30 okay this part is settled okay now the next part is the spring so what we have this one is initial huh? initial so when initial you don't have to actually uh, look at the final spring what is the the value of the final spring final spring then we have to calculate for final thing okay so when uh, where is that okay the two diagrams of the rod is located at the initial and final position of the datum used. So, it's theta 0. When the rod is in its position 1, the center of gravity is located below the datum and the uh, of its gravity potential, uh, potential mg, which is negative. Okay, because the datum is here. And you are taking the weight down. That's why it's negative. Huh? Furthermore, the elastic potential mg stored in the spring is stretched at the distance of 0 0.4 sine 30. Yeah, 0 0.4 sine 30. So that's the reason why if you see the spring, it is half K S, S1, distance 1. Okay, so that is the initial, uh, initial location. Yeah? Okay. Okay, the second situation. The second situation is when the spring, uh, when the rod goes up. Yeah, when the rod goes up. So, it goes back to the datum 0, right? So, with datum 0, mg, mg, multiply 0. So, don't have. And then spring, spring also has gone to 0 distance. Yeah, spring has gone to 0 distance. So, that's why V2 is 0. T1 initially is at rest, yeah? That's the reason why this one is at 0. So, what is T2? Okay, let's calculate the T2. Half m. For linear, half mv square, half ig, omega square for uh, rotational. So, what is the linear movement? What is the linear movement that we have here? Okay, let's look at the linear movement. Oops, sorry. Okay, so we have half mv square. Yeah, v means at the g, yeah? vg square. Okay, and then we have the ig. Okay, this is a rod. So, rod at the center is 1 over 12 m r square yeah it is 1 over 12 you can just look at the table at the back of your textbook l one of uh, 1 1 over 12 m l square yeah 1 over 12 m l square yeah for like for me i memorize a bit so m l square you can just look at the back of the textbook so half i g omega square okay so now we have got uh, we have got two and uh, we have the vg right which is unknown okay so now we have to use the kinematics yeah and to relate it with omega so that you know we only have omega that is um, uh, in this instead of v and omega so at the instant considered instant is zero velocity is at ic so we have what you remember the ic that i taught you so omega omega 2 is actually connected to vg how does it get connected okay this is a triangle, right? Okay, wait uh, one second. Mm. 0 0.2 and then we have Vg. Okay. So, what is V? V is our omega, right? Okay. So, omega we don't know. But the R, we know what's the R. It is 0 0.2. Yeah. So, when you substitute inside, you will get r in a form of uh, uh, in a form of uh, what what call uh, sorry sorry you get vg in a form of omega so you just have to substitute that inside here so you get a simple thing which is this okay so now you write down this formula 
T1, T1, 0. V1, where's V1? V1, we have 6.19. So, we have 6.19. Okay. And then we have T2. T2 is from here. And then we have this. Copy down. V2. V2 is 0. Uh, V2 is 0. So, from there, we can actually solve for the omega. Okay. So, that's about uh, chapter 18. So, we are done with chapter 18 video. If you have any question, you can just ask me during the consultation hours. Please finish up all the questions that I've given you. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the questions will be all listed in the study guide. Just follow them. Submit on time. See you then.